Welcome back air gunners to the Air Gun Advisor. And what we have here is a very nice little compressor for those of you who are just getting started in air guns that isn't going to break the bank. And what I mean by that is it's less than $300. And a matter of fact, if you come a little closer, there's a coupon code down below, which will save you even more money if you use it. The Air Gun Advisor is brought to you today by Air Guns of Arizona and High Pressure Pneumatics. You'll find links to these and more in the description down below. What can we expect from the Viver compressor? Because it looks just like a lot of the other compressors, but let's see if it lives up to its hype. Well, with these little compressors, you're going to realize that, well, they're not meant to fill really extremely large tanks, but how big of a tank can you fill? The manufacturer claims that it can fill a 1.5 liter air cylinder from zero to 4,500 PSI, 300 bar, whichever one you want to use, from empty to full. So this is not meant, like I said, not meant for those large tanks, but what this can do is replace that $100, $150 hand pump that you've been using and wasting a lot of time pumping air that way and working up a sweat. Now, if you want a free gym membership, get yourself one of those pumps. If you want to enjoy shooting, get yourself a small or even a large compressor with a nice size tank. As far as fill time goes, I'm gonna go ahead and fill a 0.7 liter air cylinder. You can watch that down below. I'm gonna have it running as we go through this review so you can kind of get an idea of what it's gonna be for a zero to 4,500 PSI fill as well as a 1,500 to 4,500 PSI fill. Now this little compressor, the manufacturer claims that it can fill a 0.5 liter air cylinder in 15 minutes from zero to full. We'll find out. We got 0.7 down there. We'll see how long it takes. Now, it also suggests that from 3,000 to 4,000 PSI, you can go ahead and fill it in about five minutes. Now, the only problem with that is most of us are going to be shooting our air guns down to a regulator setting of around 1,500 PSI. So when we get all said and done, we'll see what a 1,500 PSI to 3,400 PSI fill actually takes in a large 0.7 liter cylinder. It does come with a auto stop on the top here. I'm going to go ahead and tilt this down. You can probably see it also in the video, but right here, it's a manual auto stop. Where is it? And when the gauge hits a certain point or whatever your set point is, it closes or closes the circuit and then it kicks the machine off. Now, for safety reasons, you're going to want to keep a close eye on this compressor. You're not going to want to sit down, go have a drink somewhere, and then come back and expect it to be done. This is something you definitely need to keep an eye on. One of the features that I really do like about this is that it can both run off a 12 volt car battery as well as just your regular 120 volt home circuit. If you haven't taken a look, I'm going to guide you guys to the back of my truck video that I did earlier. You're going to want to click on that up here. I took a compressor, similar compressor, um, not the same though, a similar type of compressor, and I ran wires through the back of my truck and created a 12 volt hookup back there. You're going to want to check that out, especially if you're looking at one of these kinds of compressors, give you some ideas, because you're not always going to want to be opening and closing the uh, hood of your car to get to that car battery. Now, something else to consider, this compressor required me to have the car running at all times. Otherwise, the voltage would drop down below. I believe it was like nine volts and this compressor would not run. It had like a safety shut off. So keep that in mind. I did go ahead and what I would do is I go ahead and hit my auto start. It would start up, run for about 15 minutes, which would be enough time for me to get my compressor going, fill up my air guns, get this cooled off again, and then back to shooting. So that time frame worked pretty well. So if you have auto stop on your vehicle, something you're going to want to keep in mind. But check your look. Watch how I put that 12 volt circuit in the back of my truck. I think you're going to really dig that. Now this is a oilless compressor. That means you're not going to be adding any oil to it. And oil oftentimes helps with the cooling process. So one of the concerns that you're going to have with a small compressor like this is overheating. Overheating is probably the main culprit of death for these small compressors. And that's one of the reasons you don't want to fill up a super large tank and leave this running for hours on end to do so is because of overheating issues. Now this is nice. It has two fans on here, which are switched on by this bottom switch. Let's see if I get it right here. Yeah, the bottom switch right here, I think. The bottom, yeah, bottom one. 
And then the compressor turns on with this top switch. So you can turn the fans on and off each time. Uh, the other thing that you're gonna wanna know, and it kind of bothers me a little bit, is that it does have a converter that is built into this. Now that's a good thing. I do like having the converter in there, but there's no on off switch for the converter. So whenever it's plugged into the wall, you're always gonna hear it running to some degree. You're not gonna hear the fans running and so forth, but you will hear it running to some degree. And speaking again of fans and heat, let me guide you up to the top here. You have a nice little thermometer gauge right here so you can keep an eye out. Now, during my testing, when I was filling up that 0.7 liter bottle that you see, yep, see filling up right down there? I didn't get above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So it did keep it cool. Now my garage, my shop where I am right now, is actually pretty cool still because it is the end of winter and about 65, maybe 70 degrees in here. So I did have that added benefit. In the middle of the summer, you might see that temperature climb above the 100 degree mark. All right, so you decide to pick up the Viva compressor, but what else is coming with it? Well, first and foremost, you got a lot of seals in here as well as burst discs. So we see there's burst discs in here, which is a nice safety feature, but you also have all the seals to rebuild this compressor. And when do you rebuild it? Well, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked. First thing I always do is a deadhead test. Now, a deadhead test is when you take this hose and you put a deadhead at the end here, and it comes with one. So you're going to take it and you're going to stick it right in here. Deadhead means that no air is going to escape. And you set this pressure gauge right here to 4,500 PSI, and then you go ahead and turn it on. And you see what kind of time, what's the length of time for this to fill up and to shut off at 4,500 PSI. That's kind of like your baseline data for this uh, compressor. And oftentimes what I'll do, and I have it on the back here, but you could also write it up here. You just write that time in Sharpie marker or permanent marker so you have that reference point as you're using the compressor. And then if you notice any large deviation, you're gonna see some deviation here and there, but if you see a large deviation in that number, that means it's probably time to go ahead and tear into it and rebuild the compressor. And the Viva manual actually has a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it. Now, is it the best guide ever? No, not the best guide ever, but it does give you pretty decent, comes with uh, some pictures, it comes with a lot of information, and it does give you a pretty decent idea here. You can take a look right here, the inside of the compressor and where the seals go. So I do like that. Sometimes these uh, inexpensive compressors don't come with that detailed of a guide, especially when they're coming from overseas. So. Nice job on that. I do have to say that that manual is very nice. Now also here, you're gonna notice they come with these white filter things. These white filters are a oil and water separator. So they go inside this gold housing and believe it or not, these compressors, they build up enough heat that you get condensation inside the piston and then it, the condensation comes right out of the fill port there and eventually it would make its way into your air gun or air cylinder or whatever you might have. So this is to help eliminate some of that. Now, when I filled up that 0.7 liter bottle down there and it's filling up, I dumped out this little uh, filter, popped it out of there. I had to actually use some tweezers because it was stuck in there, no big deal. But I could wring this filter out and have enough water dripping to, uh, it made a nice little puddle on my table here. but. Uh, and then also you can see that uh, there's a little bit of dirt that was inside the compressor from the manufacturing process. All normal things, but keep in mind, you don't want to get a lot of water or any water for that matter into your air gun. And you can buy extra external filters. They don't come with this, but that will actually filter out the moisture better than these little white cottony filters that come with it. Now the cottony filters, they're good. I'm glad they're there but I would like a little bit more in that way. But that's easy enough, you can buy that. And I think that all these little small portable compressors come with some variety of this. They don't come with a really good, nice external filter on the outside already. So it's something you're gonna to have to get no matter what type of small compressor you're gonna get if you wanna keep all the moisture out of those air cylinders. Now I wanna take a second, if you're getting some solid content knowledge, you feel like this review is worthwhile, worth your time, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button down below because that's gonna let other people know that the content you're getting on the Airgun Advisor right here is good, decent, wholesome content and it'll help shift this video outside of your realm and into the realm of others 
around you that are also into air guns and shooting and outdoor sports and activities. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and smash that like button for me too while you're at it. Well, let's talk build quality of this Viver compressor. Now, first and foremost, I think it's a very solid compressor, especially for the money under $300. Remember, there's a coupon code down in the description below, which will actually help this channel out because a little portion of that purchase will come back to the channel, me here, which buys the equipment and everything else you see going on here. So I appreciate that. You don't have to. There's a lot of compressors out there. If this isn't the one for you, don't worry about it. But if it is, check out that coupon code. However, build quality. Now I will say, what, what's the difference between this and a $500 portable compressor? So there's little things like the gauge, is, the gauge of the wire here for the 12 volt was something that I noticed readily. The alligator clips here, all a little less, um, less solid build. The gauge of the wire is a little bit smaller. It works though, and it does, this compressor does come with a 12 month warranty. So, you know, I, I don't have any worry that it's gonna break immediately or you know, use it for a year and it's done. If this is your personal compressor that you're using, you're shooting a couple times a month throughout the year, probably gonna last you a few years. Um, now, if you are a large scale club and your club is just using this and you have 10 guys shooting off this one compressor for the next year, probably just gonna last you about a year and a half, maybe two years at that, at tops. But it is a nice compressor and it's going to get you away from having to use a hand pump. And I'll tell you, I had a hand pump for all of one outing in my life. And that was to pump up a Benjamin, oh, it was a Benjamin Discovery back in the day. And that thing, you only filled it up to 3,000 PSI. You're not even talking about 4,500 PSI. And that took all the fun out of shooting for me. Um, sure, can you use it in, the, in a like life or death situation? You have to have your air gun to shoot and you don't have electricity? Yeah, absolutely. But that's not what I'm, I'm ta typically talking about. This is something like this is what you're going to want to start out with, especially at the $280, $300 price range. So keep that in mind. A lot of options like it. This one's a nice solid one. All right, you probably noticed that down below that tank is full. So how long did it take me to fill up my 0.7 liter air gun cylinder? Well, first and foremost, remember this is a large cylinder, not many this size, and this is from zero. You're never gonna be shooting your air gun down to zero because your pellet just won't go out the barrel at that point in time. So from zero to full, that'd be like a first time purchase, you're talking 38 minutes. Not too bad, especially for the first fill, you're probably gonna fill it up at home anyway, and so you got a little time on your hands. Now, if we're looking at from just 1,500 to 4,500 PSI. Now most, some air guns don't even go up to 4,500, so I'm just go up to 3,000. So your fill time is gonna vary based on your equipment. But that being said, it took me 21 minutes from 1,500 all the way up to 4,500 PSI in that large 0.7 liter cylinder. So it's not the fastest compressor in the world. I'm gonna say typical time for the typical air gun down the range, filling up in between fills probably about eight to 12 minutes. Because remember, most air gun cylinders are smaller and so much smaller than that 0.7 I have going there. Some final thoughts on this compressor. There's a couple of features on it that you know I really, really like, but there's also some drawbacks to this. This little compressor is loud. Now, out here in my shop, I was definitely putting on some earmuffs. I did not want to listen to this thing for 20, 30 minutes as it's going through. So it is loud. Now, is it so loud it's gonna bother everybody inside your house or everyone down at the range? Probably not, but it definitely has some considerable noise and there are some portable compressors that are much, much quieter than this. Second thing that I wanna bring up is the fill times. The fill times on this, even though it is the cheap one, of the cheapest compressor I've ever done are good, but they're not quite as fast as some other portable compressors that I have tested. Another thing that I might like to change is the fill hose on these. The fill hose is long, but it's not quite long enough because a lot of times those fill ports on the air guns are in awkward positions. And you're not gonna have a lot of room to work, so you might be setting your air gun like just off to the side here or into the front or someplace else. And I'd like a little longer fill hose, but since it does come with a quick disconnect for the hose, you can go ahead and buy one separately and attach it just like that. 
Another thing that I'm not a huge fan of are these mechanical gauges that shut off by closing electrical circuit right here with the needles. Uh, I have had a problem with one in the past on a compressor that I tested. Uh, it's not to say it was a problem with necessarily that brand of compressor because these fill gauges are all made by the same people, same wires, etc. as I've taken these apart plenty of times to look them over. But I will say these fill gauges are not as reliable as some other options that are on the market today. And my final thing that I like to change, this has an automatic shut off in 30 minutes. Now, most air guns aren't going to take 30 minutes, but while I was filling up a 0.7 liter tank or maybe about 1.5 liter maximum tank that this thing can fill up, you're going to have to run the cycle on and off a few times to get it there to be finished so it's all the way full. It's, it's not going to matter to most people, but it is a little bit of a pet peeve because for me, I know I have to keep an eye on these things. I do keep an eye on these things and to have all of a sudden have it shut off. Well, it's kind of like, what's going on here? So that 30 minute shut off time, we can get rid of that too. So those are my final thoughts. Now this review isn't just about my experiences here in my shop or out of the range, but it's also about your experiences back home. If you have a portable compressor that you absolutely love, if you have a Viver compressor that you love, or if you have some pet peeves of your own, make sure you put them down in the comments down below. That helps to build the community base and the knowledge base right here on the Airgun Advisor because other people just like yourself are gonna to wanna to know the feedback, not just my experience, but your experience back home. So make sure you leave those in the comments down below. Again, if you're thinking about picking one of these up, take a look at the link in the comments, or not in the comments, take a look at the link in the description down below. You'll see one for Amazon as well as for Viver in there. And until next time, make sure that trigger pull stays smooth, those pellets fly straight, Fill up those air tanks, guys, without a hand pump, and we'll see you right here on the Airgun Advisor.